Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I'm so excited to introduce you to a new um, medium in which to paint with, and it's called Massa Paper. M-A-S-A. -A. Simple. It comes in a roll, three feet by three feet, and it's usually used for inking and all kinds of different things. But today, I'm going to show you how to make a batik without wax. And batiks usually are done uh, with wax, and then you paint on it and you remove the wax. Well, today we're gonna do a batik, but without using any wax. So this is the paper that's gonna make it happen. So the materials that you will need are very, very simple, and you don't need to go through a lot of expense to create something really cool like this, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna tell you materials-wise is you are gonna need a piece of tracing paper, which is this one here. Chris, get it together. Um, you're gonna need tracing paper, right? You're gonna need masa paper. You're gonna need watercolor paper. And I usually cut my masa paper the same size as my watercolor paper. Clear? Okay. You're gonna need a few colors of watercolors. So I'm gonna use cobalt green, dioxazine pur purple, and I'm Dr. Dome Blue, that is um, Golden Brand Core Watercolor. A stylus, an eraser, Golden's Soft Gel Mat. Um, I have here a Ruby Satin Brush by Silver Brushes, size number eight. And the number on it is 2500S round, in case you need to buy this. <clears throat> Sorry. And then I have a little ceramic plate. I love this thing because you can just put your paints in here and just add a little bit of water to it and it activates right away, which I'm going to show you how to do in a minute. But first, I'm going to clear all of this off the table because we don't need it right now. So this is all going to go away because we don't need that. The only thing we're going to need is a brush. We won't need the transfer. Oh, no, I'm going to show you how to do it first. Yes, we do need the transfer paper. What am I talking about? Okay, so first what I did is I created my design on a piece of tracing paper. And this way I can have my pattern to use over and over again many, many times. And if you haven't done this before, you take your tracing paper, you open up your transfer paper, which is this. It's really graphite paper, not carbon paper like in the old days. And then you're going to put your paper on top of that with the dark side down. You're gonna take your master paper and you're gonna lay this on top. And with your stylus, you're gonna pat, you know, put the design <clears throat> on your master paper. Okay, so I'm gonna take this away because I did that already for you so that we don't have to waste time on the video to do that. Uh, another tool that everybody has at home is a Sharpie or Macron or anything that does not bleed. But if it bleeds, it doesn't matter because it's part of the project. So I use usually an ultra fine point. And after I have traced it on my pattern here on my master paper, I, tra I outline it with my Sharpie. And if you notice, I'm not really careful of going around it. Oh, let me follow that little line exactly. You can see some of my pencil lines and who cares when we paint on this, it's gonna go away. You won't even see it. And if you see it, it's part of the process. So right now I'm gonna clip, and here's your watercolor paper, which I'm gonna use in a minute. But for right now, I'm gonna leave my little area here clean. And I'm gonna show you how massa paper is used. Um, oh, one more thing I didn't tell you. If you can get a big size brush in a minute, I'll tell you what we're gonna do with it. Um, as some of you know, uh, I'm an artist educator for Golden Paints. And I really want to thank Golden Paints because I've been compensated by giving some of the materials today to be able to make this video possible. So if you have a chance and uh, you want to try some of these products, Golden Paints are just awesome. So give it a try. I have a water uh, bottle here and I have it on, on kind of like a misty type setting. Okay, so mass of paper. It has kind of like a smooth side and a rough side. What paint, What part do you paint with? Either. It depends on what look you want. Today, I want a look that is really more of a really crinkly type thing. 
and I want to be able to get in into that paper. So I chose to do the shiny side. Now, one of the tricks that I'm going to show you is um, putting paper together. Sometimes I put my um, paper on with a brayer. But if you don't have a brayer, you can use an old room key or anything that has like a, a sharp edge around here so that you can press your paper out. These are all materials that you have at home. So you don't need to really have a big expense for this. Your major expense would be your watercolor colors, your watercolor paints that you should have already if you're doing this project. But if not, just buy yourself a few colors and you'll see how cool this is. I'm telling you, once you do one of these, you're gonna wanna do 20 more of them. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna spray my paper. And if you can see by the shine, it's sprayed on the front and on the back. But I'm not soaking my paper, not for this project. Sometimes you can put this paper in water and soak it really good. Today, that's not my intention. I just want to um, Okay, so I wet my paper, right? I don't know if you can see by the shine of the paper that it's wet, but it's not soaking wet. I just kind of li literally misted it and kind of got my paper wet all over, right? I can see here in the corner that I missed a little bit, so I'm going to take that and wet it again. So the whole idea is wet paper, but not soaking wet, okay? Not for this project. So I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to crinkle it. I usually do it from the middle or sides, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to open up my paper very carefully because I don't want to rip this paper. When um, we started out, this paper was very strong. I don't know if you could notice it that when we did the video, but now it's become very soft and brittle. So we got to be careful with it, okay? So I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to dry my surface back here. And then I'm going to take my watercolor paper and I'm going to put it on the table, right? And then I'm going to put my massa paper on top of my watercolor paper. And I try to line it up so that it's more or less on exactly the paper. I'm using a 9 by 12 size, by the way, if I didn't tell you that. So we're going to glue this paper to the watercolor paper. But when I say glue, I'm not using glue. I'm going to be using my soft gel mat. The reason is because the mat is more of a gel to mix with your paints so that everything can you know, blend together and you can work on top of it. If you use any kind of other glue like Mod Podge or Elmer's glue or whatever, that is literally a glue and it will create a film on top of it and it won't let your paper absorb the color, okay? So it has to be, if you have um, satin, whatever, it doesn't matter, but it has to be gel matte, okay? And it comes in a little jar and it's really kind of creamy, so that's what we're gonna use today, okay? So I have a big brush here. Uh, you can use any kind of brush you have at home, foam brush. It doesn't matter because we're not going to be painting with this one. So um, I just happen to have a, a Filbert uh, Silver Silk 88, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to fold my paper in half so that you can see the whole half of my palette, right? And I'm going to take a nice amount of gel. Don't be cheap with this stuff. And I'm going to paint it or put it on my paper all over. And it's going to be just half of the sheet of paper and go all the way to the edges. Don't see how I'm rubbing my edges all the way around the edges. And then I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to fold it back up again very carefully. Okay. And I like to see all my little wrinkles in my paper. Some people don't like that many wrinkles. So if you don't like that many wrinkles, you can just take a, a room key, a credit card, and just kind of flatten it out. But notice how I'm not scraping it because I don't want to I don't want to rip the paper. So you can keep going. I like to use my hands because it tells me where I missed putting some gel on it, right? So right here, I can tell you, see, I was skimpy there. That's what happens. So I will come here. Let me tell you, when you guys do this project, I want you to put pictures on my site and tell me how you did it or email me 
with any questions you have, chriscruzdesigns at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to help you out. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this because I like those wrinkles. I don't want to smooth any of these out. But like I said, it's a matter of taste. So if you decide, no, I want it flatter, then just press your fingers and see how it gets flatter. I don't want it flat. Now I'm going to take the other half, but I'm going to pull it a little bit above where I had my last soft gel matte line, right? So I'm going to take the bottom half now and do the same thing. I'm going to put my gel on it. Go all the way to the edges. Bring it down. Do the other side. And this, let me tell you, is the hardest part of this project. The rest is a piece of cake. But this is the most important part. So make sure that you put it down. And um, I have some news for everybody. Uh, if you're in the Chattanooga area in June, uh, there's an art expo in Chattanooga with over 50 teachers, and they'll be teaching all kinds of classes there. And I was lucky enough to be selected to teach four classes. So if you go on the artexpo.com for Chattanooga uh, for the end of June, June 24th, uh, maybe you get to meet me and take some of my classes. I would love to meet you in person. So I'm going to put this down and rub it out, rub it out softly, okay? And check my edges, everything is glued down. So I'm gonna close my gel mat. I'm gonna clean my brush a minute. Let that sit for a second. And I'm gonna show you how to activate your watercolor paints, okay? If you've never done this before, this is a great time to start. So I'm using a uh, Ruby Satin number eight and the number on it is a 2500s round series uh i'm gonna come here and since i have a little bit of my gel on my paper i'm just gonna rub it off okay and i'm gonna put my pattern back down again very good uh, there it's centered i'm gonna move it over a little bit there we go how about that i think that's a little bit better Okay, so if I was to use these paints right now, I can touch them in my finger and there's nothing on there. It's dry. So I take my little spray bottle and I just lightly spray it and see how that starts bleeding those colors. That's what you want. So I'm going to let it sit for a little bit so that all those little colors start activating. And my paper, since I glued on my soft gel mat, now it's kind of cold to the touch, but it's not wet. And in order for my paint to move, it has to be wet. So I'm gonna take my spray bottle and through this whole process, you'll see me misting this project. And when I say misting, a light mist. So I start from very high up and I mist my paper again, because I want to see that little shiny area there. Um, if you have freezer paper, palette paper or whatever, just put it to the side of your project. Now, this is the most important part of this project. And I want you to listen carefully because this will depend on whether your project is a success or not. With masa paper, once the color is on, it's not like watercolor paper where you can just pull it up if you didn't uh, want that much paint on it. With masa paper, once it's on, it's on forever and ever and ever for all eternity. So. What you want to do is make sure that whatever amount of paint you put on your flower is just as light as possible because we're going to put three or four layers of paint on it. Now, on my original, if you notice, there's a lot of white areas in here and that's what makes this project so super cool. So when we go to paint on it, we're not going to paint like this, like we normally do with a brush. We'll just kind of blot the paint down. And because the paper is wet, it's going to take on these colors and blend them together. Okay. So that's the part that I'm going to show you because you're going to create an awesome project. And like I said, leave me, um, you know, a little note in the comments if you tried it and tell me how you liked it. Because if you do, I'll be 
posting others. I'm working on a bird now, and that's going to be my next masa paper project. So if you want that, just in the comments, say, yes, I want to see a bird. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my brush, make sure it's a clean brush, and I'm just going to put a little bit of color on my brush. And see how I'm mixing it here on my, I'm not taking a glob of paint on, I'm just literally making color water, right? So that the water has a little tint on it. And how do I know if it's light enough? I'm gonna put some of that on my palette paper and see if it's light enough. How do I know if it's light enough? Let me take a little bit more water and see how light that is. That's what we want and see how little paint you need. So now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna test it and see if it's light enough, and it is. I can even go a little lighter, so I'm gonna take a little bit more water and thin this a little bit even clearer, see that? And I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna drop my paint in. Now, don't be so specific that, oh, I have this petal here. No, we're gonna put three or four layers of this stuff on here. So right now, all we're doing is really coloring our petals. So I don't care where they go. And if you, I'm going to go slow motion so that you can see that I'm not really painting. I'm just rubbing my brush on my pal palette. And look, very slow. I'm just dropping. See that? Dropping. 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 And I like all that white showing. So we're going to give that a little rest. And we're going to clean our brush. And we're gonna take a little bit of that yellow. And any yellow will do. This This is gonna be mixed with other stuff, so don't even, you know. So I'm gonna take a little yellow and put it on here. And I'm gonna mix it really good. And I'm just gonna drop it in the center slow. See, I'm just taking my brush and just kinda like blotting this. So there's my yellow. And that's all you need for now. Now you're gonna rinse your brush and notice how I'm working in different areas because see how this is already becoming a batik without even wanting it to? So now I'm gonna take a little bit of my green and I'm gonna just wipe the edges of my brush on the little palette. And again, on my palette paper, I'm just pressing my brush and getting all that water out of my brush. And I'm gonna come here and blot some of that green, blot, some of that green. Okay, so I'm not really painting. Now, since we have all of this here, we're gonna blend some of those colors. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of that blue that I talked about originally, and I'm gonna put it on my palette. So see how strong that is? We don't want something that strong. I want it a little bit clearer, so I'm gonna put more water this is the consistency and the color that you want. And let me tell you guys, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, over the holidays, my husband uh, treated me to some stadium lighting for my uh, studio and a new phone. And I have done this video, believe it or not, four times. And I hope this is the last time <laughs> because I'm learning how to use all my new equipment. So... Uh, if there's any mistakes in this video, bear with me. The next ones will be better. But you know how it is when you're learning something new. So, And I hate learning new technology. So here we go. But painting-wise, there's no problem. So here I got my blue. And I'm going to drop it close to the center. And I noticed that it has way too much water. Okay? And not enough pigment. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more pigment. And I'm going to come right here near the center and start dropping some of that paint. See that? Drop, drop, drop. And it's still wet. I can feel it. And I can see the little bubbles there. So drop, press, drop. Right? And I'm leaving all that white showing. Again, take some of your blue. I'm going to turn this around so that it's facing my little palette here. And I'm just rubbing a little bit of water near the edge here so that I can create some pretty blue. See that? Put it on my palette paper. And again, drop, 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 and drop. 
it's already starting to look like a batik, guys. It really is. I really, really like it. So now the green, I'm going to take a little bit of that blue and mix it in with my green to make that green a tad darker. Okay, so I'm going to come here. And if you notice, it got a little darker, right? If you want it darker than that, just mix a little bit more blue. It, this is a matter of taste. Okay, I have a little bit of Payne's Gray here from another project that I did. So I'm just going to put it in there and see what happens. Uh, it's not what I started off with, but uh, I like the Payne's Gray. Oh, it made a really nice dark green. So use Payne's Gray if you have it or any kind of dark blue, ultramarine blue. Oh, good. So now I put too much water on there. So I rubbed it really fast and I am going to put this on here. Oh, I like that combination. Gee, that looks really good. That looks really good. I like that. It's nice and dark. And I'm going to put some more blue in there. Cool. Okay. That looks really good. So I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Okay. Now we're going to work a little bit more with our purples in here. And I know that on my... um. I'm a little flower here. I would like to add a little bit of orange. Um, I don't know what kind of orange I'm going to add on there, but these are things that I figure out as I go. So when you're painting, I want you to just have fun. Don't overthink and say, oh, you know, I don't have that color. I just happen to have a little palette here that I've used before, and I have some orange, so I'm going to just spray it a little bit. And I'm going to take some of that orange and I'm going to put it on my palette. Good. I only need a little bit of that. And if you have red, it doesn't matter. Just, you know, something a little bit different contrast than that. So I'm going to tap my brush on my paper towel. Oh, yeah. That's what we needed. And I'm going to put some little orange in here. And we're going to let that dry. Maybe a little orange in here so that it's like a little reflection of the center. This is starting to really look good. Look at all these blues and these purples are working together. But now I want my purples to be a lot stronger. So I'm going to take my Diaxazine purple. And I'm going to put it on my palette here. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue. Let's see what happens. I never know what these things. I just love to experiment. So what happens is it makes the purple a little bit lighter. So I don't want that. So what if I did some paints gray? Oh, that looks good. So, okay, add to your list paint gray. This is the color you're going to use for this project. Okay. Oh, I love that. Look at that. When you're doing watercolors, let me give you a little advice. A lot of times you'll see a video on, um, on screen and you see that they mix the colors in two seconds. Well, it doesn't happen that way, my friends. I cannot make the same color twice. It's, um, it's a matter of working with your colors. So be patient with yourself. Don't say, oh my God, she and her video, it looked this color. Um, if I did this project three more times, my little blue and purple will look different. And that's the beauty of watercolors. So let's see what it looks like on our flower here. So I'm going to put a little bit of that color in here. And it happens to be a little bit too blue for me. So I'm going to take some more of my purple and I'm just going to, Oh, yeah, that's much better. I like purple better. So see, I tried it. I didn't like it, and I'm moving on. Put some more in here. Oh, yeah, look at that. See, it's just a matter of experimenting. And look at all the white I'm leaving behind. I'm not really... And like I said, I'm going back and forth. Dab, 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 dab. Dab the center, and I'm not really necessarily working all my little petals here. Oh, that one I forgot, guys. What happened? Okay. So this color is a little bit different than my original, and that's how it works sometimes. So what happens if I put a little bit more of that blue just on top to give it some... Oh, there goes the phone.
Okay, so I don't know who that was, but it can wait. Okay, so now I want to do my background. So my background is really still pretty wet. So with my yellow, I'm going to put a nice big puddle of yellow here. Okay, see how big that puddle is? Okay, and I'm going to take some of that green and put it right next to it. And some of that paint's gray. So I want a really big area here with green. So now I'm going to again spray my project and I'm going to do this upside down so you can see it better on the camera. So see all that little sprinkling of water? That's what's going to really make your batik pop. Now when you're putting your color on here, I have a clean brush here. I don't want you to drop the paint here because since this is wet, it's going to bleed in there. I wanted it to bleed naturally. So just give it a chance. Um, oh, I just noticed I could have put a little purple in there. There we go. Um, but otherwise, leave it the way it is. So now I'm going to take my yellow and I'm just going to drop it. Just like I did on my petals. But look how far from the center of these. I'm not really going that close to my flower. See, I'm going right out here. See that? Because I don't want that paint to touch my flowers just yet. And I'm going to take my green and I'm going to just dab it next to it. So that they can marry, <laughs> join together. And now I can go in here and throw some of that color around. And with all these wrinkles, that's what really makes this super, super cool. Let me take some more yellow, put it on here. Take your time, guys. I'm telling you, results are not like super quick. So I'm going to take this and... Wipe my brush, take my yellow, and go a little bit stronger in some areas over my green. And this is the part that you're going to take your time with. Whoops. Going to put a little yellow in here, come back with my green. So these are the two colors I'm using. Don't stretch. Put it in here and drop it. If you want it a little darker pick up a little bit of that blue doesn't matter now you can go closer to those petals and start putting some of that green in there but don't cover that much that you don't see your yellow see how i see my yellow there i'm gonna just leave it now you're gonna turn it around oh that looks really good and when it dries oh my gosh this is gonna look fabulous so again pick up your yellow Rub it on your paper towel. I'm sorry, on your palette paper. Told you it's Monday. <laughs> I had a huge class Saturday. It was so cool. We did a, um, a art journal and I showed the girls how to put the book together and everything. And we had so much fun and I learned so much from my students. It was so, so nice. So I learned from you guys all the time. So don't think that I know everything. I learned from you guys a lot. Or you girls, guys, doesn't matter. So now this area here kind of dried up on me. So I'm going to mist, remember, just, just mist that area. So I'm going to take my yellow and start from the outside and put some of that color in there. And I'm going to go just a little bit here in the middle without going too close. See how I'm leaving some of that white area? And come here, and if you do this, <laughs> one of my students did one of these and actually copied my signature, and she thought it was part of the project. And I said, no, put your own name on it. This way you know you did it. <laughs> so don't make that mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit. And I'm going to wash my brush, and I always tap it on my paper towel before I go in again. So now I'm, it looks like I'm brushing, but I'm not. Look, I'm just laying it down. So I'm not brushing. And it doesn't, see how that kind of spreads really cool? That's what you want. 
So again, I'm gonna take my green and I'm gonna go around here and press, but leave some of the yellow in the center there. I'm gonna turn my project around again and I'm gonna pick up some more yellow, put it on my palette paper. And notice how I'm holding my brush the whole time. I'm not really holding it like this. Sorry, I told you this at the end of the project, but you're supposed to look at this whole project first before you do it. Um, don't hold it like this. Hold it like this, and it's going to be a lot lighter touch on your paper. Okay? So here we go with the yellow. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And the whole idea of this, listen, you can do some beautiful note cards with this. And just send somebody a note card when they're not feeling good. And or just take this paper. There's so many possibilities. I'm telling you, I'm going to show you some more projects down the road. This is the first. Um, you'll see Batik Without Wax 1, Batik Without Wax 2. Once I figure this new um, phone and this new computer out, so you can follow them in a series, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do one and then two. I'm always all over the place, so you can follow. Very easy to follow me when I'm painting something. Okay, I'm going to come in here, and I think I'm going to leave this bottom area open. I think that would look really good. Once this dries, you will notice, see how dark this is? This is going to dry a lot lighter. So if you were to dry this and it dries a lot lighter and you decide that you want to put more color on it, this is the dry one now, the finished one. I can spray it again, right, and take some more paint and just kind of drop it in there if I wanted to. But it works best once it's really dried, okay? Don't do it now because now it's way too wet and your paper's gonna rip. So I want this to be a little darker, right? Don't you think it needs something? So what happens if I take my orange and my brown, my green here, it makes like a brown? Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I want that a little darker. So I'm gonna take that and just, oh, that looks good. It needed that. So that's going to go right there in the center. And what do you think? I think it looks good. I think stop by your head, right? And it was so simple to do. I mean, you can do this with your grandkids if you wanted to. Um, just let it, uh, I don't like this down here. It's just too blah. So I'm going to just take a little bit of green and yeah. But see how cool this is here? It just kind of, when it dries, it's going to be fabulous. So if you like this video, just thumbs up, please, and subscribe to my channel. This way I know you're watching. Um, it takes time to make these videos and edit them. So if you just, you know, let me know how you're liking them or what would you like to see. If you want to see a different thing the next time instead of a, a bird that I'm working on, you want it to do flowers, whatever it is, just leave me a, a comment uh, of what you would like to see next, and I'll be happy to do a video about it. So enjoy your painting. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you at the next uh, video. Thank you so much for watching. Chris Cruz here. Uh, looking forward to seeing you the next time.